Hey everybody, welcome back to the AV to the 7th Power channel where we talk about all things law, true crime, and a little bit of debauchery. Today, we're diving into jaw-dropping details surrounding Diddy. It all started with the shocking raid, a thousand bottles of baby oil, weapons, and Diddy's own sons ending up in handcuffs. Now, his legal troubles have exploded into something far more sinister. What started as a private investigation has quickly turned into a highly publicized legal showdown. But they're not telling you what the baby oil is. Okay. That's all, that's all it is. They're not saying what, what the baby oil got in it. Oh, it got know, something in the baby like oil. That. Have you ever seen uh, Blink Twice? Nah. Y'all ain't seen that Nah, yet. but give me a synopsis real quick. So Blink Twice, is a, the scenario is this is rich man, this rich dude that all the girls like, he take all the girls that win something or whatever on a trip to an island to his house or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they go out there and they have fun every night. They get drunk, they have wild parties, they pop uh, hallucinogens and all that <laughs> shit, and they be gone. But I ain't going to tell the whole story, but I know I'm going to say one part is one of the girls were tied up in the end, right? And he was sitting there looking at her when she looked up, and he said, man, last year you did it, but this year I didn't even think you could pull it off. I said, this year, man, they didn't even know they'd been there for a couple of years. Oh. They think they still been there for a couple of weeks and months. It's because they so drugged up. They so drugged up. You know what I'm saying? And from what I heard that the baby oil got some kind of shit in there the way they pour it in your drink, that shit make you forget shit. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, so it's, so it's even deeper than we even than yeah, we really think. Yeah, because why would you have a thousand... Yeah, bottles right. of baby oil. Because like, everybody's just making jokes on some like. But 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 even 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 but even that that's just a that's just a to throw us off. That's a, that's a that's a smoke signal. It's still like some. That's just a story. You right. know what I'm saying? Like just because that's what was that's what I figured and that's what I conjured from certain shit and that's what they said online and stuff and on the news. That don't mean it's true. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, they gonna get down to the nitty gritty. Or, you know, the FBI ain't wasting nothing. So I, I just, this is what I wanna know. What is the infatuation with the Diddy parties? Like, why are they so keyed in on that? What do you think well, is gonna come well, from you, that? Well, well, you gotta think. I have been to the regular Diddy parties. But explain what a regular Diddy party is. Well, like, I've been to a club version and I've been to the, his house in Miami that got rated version. I went there for New Year's Eve in 2018. I think, yeah, that was my son was born. I mean, that's when I, you know, you did at the same night, you did. Yeah. So, <laughs> now he was born, but when I made him, you know? Oh, you yeah. made him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, it, it was crazy. I had, I had a great time that night. Everybody was there. I don't like, everybody want to be quiet, but right. everybody was there. I ain't make it in the house. You know what I'm saying? I don't like going to other men's houses and stuff like that. I like, I'm cool with outside. It was good. I was cool. Everybody was outside anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I I'm sitting there like, I just, all I seen was even at the club party, it was just party. It was like the biggest, the happiest, the greatest time you could ever have at a, at a party party. You know what I'm saying? This party that we, you know, that we go to. But then, like, I ain't gonna even lie. When I woke up, like, the next morning, like, cause we left, like, two or three o'clock. I woke up the next morning. It was motherfucker talking about, bro, I just left that bit. It was like eight, nine o'clock. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Another nigga house? Oh, we had a brunch, nigga. Like, but, like, the brunch is like in the daytime, like, when it's light outside. Like, what was you still doing there? Like, not, I wasn't even, like, thinking they were doing nothing like that. I was just like, what? How possibly. much fun could you yeah, possibly be Yeah, having? like, damn. You man, gotta I'm cut this shit off and something. That's even worse than after hours. Bro, I thought, <laughs> bro, I thought that when I left, like, at least like an hour later, everybody else was gonna be gone. Right. Like, <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? Shit was still going. But, like, I ain't never, I ain't never seen nothing like that with Diddy. I done been around Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know when I was signed to 50, he didn't fuck with that nigga then. You feel what I'm saying? Cause they <laughs> never fuck with that nigga. At all, like rest in peace, Chris Lighter. Chris Lighter the good. Like he'll he'll do business with him, but he ain't gonna fuck with him personally. Now, the uh, 
freak offs. Um, and they when they talk about uh, the nature of what's too freaky or that's we, we for the for the, the for the sake of the argument, if he had a thousand bottles of just baby oil and lube, because he liked baby oil and then lube and like but everybody's like, why is he so freaky? What 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 do you what does it mean to be too freaky? What does that look like to you in your life? I have no idea. Right. So what what is too freaky for another man or another woman? Like I I know I I don't do kinky shit. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I like freaky shit, but I don't do kinky shit. I think they meaning kinky. They not meaning freaky. Yeah. I think they mean kinky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Weird shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like freaky shit the world do. You know what I'm saying? The president do. You know what I'm saying? Right. His wife. Kamala Harris do. Everybody right. do freaky shit. You That's know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. at some point of their life. You know what I'm saying? But they talking about weird shit. Yeah. They not talking about freaky yeah. shit. They talking about them freak offs really, they want to say fuck offs. You right. feel what I'm saying? Like they just can't say it on, on camera. You know what I'm saying? They can't say that shit on live TV. Oh yeah, you're having fuck offs. Nah. They, Really like what to say, you know. Yeah. But that's just the beginning. In today's video, we'll break down what exactly Diddy is being charged with, the new bombshell accusation for more than over a hundred victims, sadly, including children, and even a connection to the Tupac Shakur murder investigation. We're talking about career ending charges that could reshape the legacy of one of the most prominent figures in music. Diddy's legal nightmare kicked off with an indictment detailing three serious charges. Count one, racketeering conspiracy. Now to understand this, let's break it down. Racketeering involves participating in illegal business activities as part of an organized crime operation. But what does that really mean in practice? It's a charge typically used for organized crime families or gangs, not a mogul like Diddy. Prosecutors will have to show that Diddy was involved in a pattern of criminal activity that spanned multiple years and involved multiple people. Count two, trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion. This charge is grim and often includes the use of threats, manipulation, or outright violence to exploit victims for profit. In Diddy's case, the indictment suggests a network of individuals who were either coerced or tricked into participation, an angle that the defense will undoubtedly challenge. Count three, transportation to engage in prostitution. Allegedly, this charge refers to Diddy using private jets, luxury vehicles, and even rented yachts to move individuals across state lines for unlawful purposes. It's not just a question of who went where, but also providing his intent behind those alleged movements. This particular charge could carry serious penalties if the prosecution proves it in court. There are so many players tied to the Diddy shenanigans, one of which is Jonathan and Odie, who is likely going to be accepting a plea deal soon. Boom, you listen to your lyrics and everything, and then you become famous, okay? That's how they do it, all right? Um, Tupac's still alive. Yeah, he's Pac he's is still killer. alive, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, basically, what happens is far. The hip hop agenda is an agenda to move drugs all over the United States. They move, you need to inform the DEA. They, they move all the dope, okay, all the dope on private Dead jets, dope. which don't get screened by, by, uh, by customs, by, by DEA, okay. DEA, inside the United States, okay? They, they move what's called high-grade power MDMA. They move mm-hmm. cocaine, and they move uh, liquid cocaine in the bottles too okay so they put the liquid cocaine in the bottles and they move it i see the liquid cocaine i've drank it myself having sex with diddy and cassie okay Ooh. it's not good he drinks it all the time all right oh. all the gg that's liquid cocaine whoa right. whoa okay 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 have you guys ever heard of liquid cocaine can you put a one in the chat if you've heard of liquid cocaine put a two in the chat if you haven't heard of liquid cocaine I have never heard of this, but apparently this man has had liquid cocaine with Diddy 
and Cassie. And if that's not enough to keep you hooked, just wait, because Diddy's legal team is pulling out all the stops to fight back. Let's talk about Diddy's battle for bail. After being arrested on September 16th, Diddy has made three attempts to secure bail, each more desperate than the last. His legal team, now featuring two powerhouse attorneys, Anthony Rico and Alexandra Shapiro, who put together a staggering $50 million bail package. But here's the kicker. The judge denied it. Why? The courts considered Diddy a danger to the community. Let me repeat that. A danger to the community. Jacob Shamsi and Business Insider. Thank you. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, that uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is very active and ongoing. And I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly foreseeable, um, but I cannot predict them sitting here today. All right. Thank you, everyone. Let's look at the actual indictment. This comes from the United States District Court, Southern District of New York. So it's the United States of America versus Diddy. Just him. So it is a little bit different as far as the racketeering conspiracy. Um, it's it's different in a shape or form of RICO that we've seen applied to Trump, RICO that we're seeing in YSL. But here we're seeing RICO against Diddy. For decades, the defendant abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him for his desires to protect his, rep his reputation and conceal his conduct. To do so, he relied on employees, resources, and influence of the multifaceted business empire that he led and controlled, creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associated associates engaged in and attempted to engage in, amongst other crimes, trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. With his vast resources and influence, prosecutors argue that he could easily intimidate witnesses or obstruct justice. Anthony Riso is a veteran of federal criminal defense, known for taking on high-profile cases involving organized crime. He's no stranger to courtroom drama. Then there's Alexandra Shapiro, an appellate expert with a reputation for overturning tough convictions. Their presence on Diddy's legal team signals that he He's preparing for a long, drawn-out legal battle. Now, a lot of people ask, how can someone as powerful as Diddy end up being denied bail? The answer lies in the nature of these charges and the scope of the allegations. A federal judge has labeled him as not only a flight risk, but a risk to public safety, despite the presence of high-profile attorneys at his side. And it doesn't end there. The courtroom drama is escalating as a new judge has stepped in. Diddy's case has been reassigned to a new judge after the previous judge, Andrew L. Carter, cited scheduling conflicts. Sean Diddy Combs, criminal sex trafficking case has been assigned to a new judge. No explanation has been given. Combs was arrested last month and is charged with racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking, and transportation to engage in prostitution. He has pleaded not guilty to those charges. The first judge denied Combs' bond and ordered him to remain in jail after awaiting trial. Combs has appealed that decision. This change gives Diddy a fresh shot at challenging his bail status. But will a new judge see things differently? Will he be more sympathetic to Diddy's defense? Or will he take the same hard line as his predecessors? In cases like this, a change in judges can often lead to changes in strategy. The defense may opt to reframe their narrative and seek new avenues for dismissing charges entirely. It's a waiting game for now, but this development can be crucial. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, it does. Attorney Tony Busby dropped a bombshell. He's now representing 120 new accusers, including 25 minors. That's right, 120 new accusations spanning over 25 years, taking place at parties, venues, and industry events. To put this in context, these aren't just baseless claims. Busby is preparing to file lawsuits, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Like, they, they say that, like, did he, like, look. This this uh, supposedly is a picture of Diddy with an underage girl. Diddy with another underage girl. That's his head up here. Oh my goodness, guys! As him arguing with Cuba Gooding Jr. This is what I was looking for. 
this picture right here. Little Rod with Cuba Gooding Jr. Right? This picture is menacing. This is likely to turn into a legal marathon, with Diddy's team having to sift through decades worth of allegations. The sheer volume of claims could overwhelm even the most experienced defense attorneys. Now, I know many of you are wondering, where did this all start? Throughout the years, Diddy's made some truly questionable public statements. Let's take a look back. The billionaire auction moment where Diddy talked about auctioning off celebrities in a way that made people just uncomfortable. Comments made towards Justin Bieber, borderline inappropriate and filled with cringe. <laughs> when is that coming, that Lamborghini? We talked about this last he time. He had the Lamborghini for a day or two, and he had <laughs> access to the house, and he knows better than be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. <laughs> The infamous Everybody Lotion Up video, where he pushed the idea of massaging up in a way that people would now be looking through a different lens. Rock, be singing, the ladies be nice. Hey, yo, everybody, make sure your breath is fresh. And club love, make sure you lotion up. Here's a club, you know what I'm saying? If you're smoking weed, get the Listerine strips. Please be respectful. Ladies, if they don't want to dance, don't let that hold you back, because this whole thing's a pop. Put that Donnell Jones, come on. Gang, 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 get to the dance floor. Yeah, love, love, love. These clips may seem trivial, but they add a layer of context to the accusations against him, a pattern of behavior that's now being used to build the prosecution's case. But perhaps the most explosive twist is the resurfacing of old rumors connecting Diddy to the 1996 murder of Tupac Shakur. Tupac's family has bought in an attorney to investigate any possible ties to Diddy. While Diddy denies involvement, the timing couldn't be worse, with two high-profile cases hanging over his head. How did Tupac feel about Puffy after he got shot at Quad Studios? Because I know he felt like, you know, Puffy had something to do with it or he knew what was going to happen. He felt like he was set up because he thought he was amongst friends. And when it went down, he was surrounded by a bunch of people we thought was his friends. And he felt like Puffy, he knew what was going to happen and he didn't give him a heads up. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, he saw C's up in the window, like, come on, come on, come on. And everybody drawing him in, drawing him in, drawing him in. You know, come to the studio, come to the studio. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 and, and, and Bad Boy had saturated the whole neighborhood, that, that, that neighborhood. That, they were in the studio, multiple rooms in the studio, and they were shooting a video around the corner. So Bad Boy and their allies had covered that whole neighborhood. They were, they were there, you know. Pac wasn't, they were nothing for Pac to fear because he was supposed to have been amongst allies. You know, so something happened. Somebody knew. Yeah, I can see how Pac felt like they had something to do with the setup, man. But speaking of Puffy, right, how do you feel about the rumor that Puffy, he gave a guy named Eric Von Zip a check for a million to give the Keefe D to kill Tupac? I'm familiar, I'm familiar with the story. I'm familiar with the dude. My man, Big Psych, rest in peace, used to know that dude. So you met Von Zip before. So how does that make you feel, man? Somebody that you met, and I'm sure that he knew that she was Tupac's brother. How does that make you feel knowing that he's the one that provided Keefe D with the gun to kill Tupac? I mean, it's all fucked up. It was a, it was a setup. It was a plot to murder my brother. I feel fucked up about it. I don't know that nigga, but I ain't got no love for none of them. Uh, you know, straight up. Um, it sounds like a typical <laughs> murder plot. See, but considering who that guy is to Puffy and to Keefy D, for it not to be addressed is weird. We will see. My homie Big Psych knew him. You know, he used to be at some of them basketball games 
where the dude was, you know, putting up a case of champagne, case of Moet on the ball game. You know, he was a big, you know, big spender, flashy dude. Yeah. No, he would be out on the West Coast quite often. Did you and Big Sight know he had any connection to Pac? Um, not, not at, no, not at that time. Before Sight passed, we, you know, he, he mentioned that he knew who he was, but dude was already dead. Sight was a crip. <laughs> Sight was an IVC, Inglewood, Inglewood Village crip. You know, and he hung around. Psych would be around other Crips. So that's how, you know, in that is how we got to meet dude or knew dude or knew who dude was. But I, I didn't know him personally. For decades, conspiracy theories have swirled around Diddy's potential involvement in Tupac's death. And now he faces federal charges. The Shakur family is determined to uncover any remaining secrets. If you haven't seen Jaguar Wright's latest interview, where she spills the tea on Diddy's activities, check it out. She claims there's more to the story than meets the eye, and even points a finger at another high-profile celebrity. Something that people, a lot of people knew about, but people were simply too scared Everyone knows. to talk about. Everyone knows. And every person that's sitting there trying to act surprised, knows very well. The whole point of this, like Cat Williams said when he sat with Shay Shay earlier this year, the whole point of this is for them in a coordinated effort to pretend like none of it is real for the public's perception. But everyone knows what's going on and it's been going on for years. It's been going on before Diddy. Mm. See, people keep looking at him like he's the Sputnik that came out of nowhere. This is someone who was designed to be what he is. We got to stop making ditties. Meanwhile, Diddy's mother, Janice Combs, has broken her silence. In a heartfelt statement, she described the allegations as public lynching and believes Diddy's settlement with ex-girlfriend Cassie was not out of guilt, but due to the complexity of the truth. Embattled music mogul Sean Combs' mother is defending her son. She's calling the charges of sex trafficking and racketeering a public lynching and a pain too unbearable to put into words. Janice Combs has often been seen by his side at glamorous red carpet events. She's also seen in this video at his infamous white party in the Hamptons. And if the pressure wasn't already mounting, one of Diddy's alleged associates quietly accepted a plea deal earlier this year. Brendan Paul, accused of being a drug mule, will enter a six-month drug rehab program in exchange for dropped charges. He was caught on the same day Homeland Security raided Diddy's properties. So what's next for Sean P. Diddy Combs? With a new judge, over 120 victims, and accusations stretching back decades, his path forward is anything but clear. We'll be following this case closely, so stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already, and let's see how all of this unfolds. Stay safe out there. See you in the next one. Bye.